Hello everyone, welcome to 3dedesignacademy.com. In this lesson, I'm going to show you guys how to build a licensed pocket like this one. So if you look at this one, you'll see that there is a surface above and there is a pocket surface over here. But the most importantly, it's fading nicely and transitioning to this surface over here. So how do you create something like this? Well, basically you have to make sure that this one is just one surface. So let me explain to you how to do that. So let's just go back to Elias over here. I already have this canvas imported with the approximate size of the Lucid Air, uh, which I'm using as a reference. So the first thing you need to do is you have to set up the curve for the body. So I'm just going to set up a curve like this. And let me just make sure that the symmetry is on. Looks like there, well, it might be flat, but I'm pretty sure there's a little bit of curvature and you do want, to, especially if you're creating a body like this, you do want a little bit of acceleration towards the outboard side. So I'm just going to do that, maybe extend it just a little bit over here. And of course, because it's a rear of the car, let's move it over here. And I'm also going to give it a little bit of crown like that. So if you look at the curvature cone over here, um, this is the kind of a shape that you want. Now, depending on the situation, you might want a lot, you have a little, but a nice acceleration towards the outboard side is recommended. All right, so I'm just going to have a curve set up like this. And of course, this has a section. Um, so let's go ahead and create that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a curve again and let's make a degree to the side. I'm gonna snap it at the center. Just going to bring it down probably about here like this. And let's go ahead and give it a little bit of volume from the side. Oh, let's go to the side like this. Just a little bit of volume. And I'm just going to use the stretch tool to make sure it's got a little angle towards the front at the bottom. All right, once that's done, all you have to do is uh, just do a rail. Now, because I want this uh, to going across the center, I'm just going to use parallel. And I'm just going to do something like this. Now, here comes the critical part. How do you do this surface over here? Well, when you're doing something like this, you do want to copy the uh, copy and paste the exact same curve from the up uh, from uh, from the top like this. The reason why I do that is because you want the sections to be very similar. Uh, if the gesture is the same, the highlight over here is also going to be very similar as well. All right. So now uh, I'm just going to create a similar curve. So I'm going to just snap a curve like this and I'm just going to oh, move it over here. Uh, again, I'm just going to, actually, you know what? This one I think is a little bit flatter. So maybe I'll just give a slight crown, a little bit less than one on the top. And again, you do want to make a rail like this. And essentially that's the basic concept. Now that's our over, you will see that this line is actually fading. So let me actually do an intersect between the two surfaces like this. And you see how it's uh, the theoretical that I have created is going up as it goes towards the outward side. But if you look at the image over here, it's actually uh, sort of doing a frown. It's going down as it goes to the outward side. So in order to do that, what you can do is you can adjust one or the other. You can either decide to make the, the uh, bottom a little bit. Um, well, let's see which one has to be flatter. I think, well, in order to do this, you either have to push this one in or push this one out. So since I created this a little bit later, let me just adjust this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the pivot right here. I'm just going to do a known proportional scale and I'm just going to use my middle, oh, not my middle mouse one, because I'm in the perspective view, I'm just going to use my left mouse one, and I'm just going to push this in. And because of the, uh, basically the relationship between the angle of the surfaces, you'll see that this one is going down like this. And that's going to create a very uh, nice and natural fade, uh, or I guess a slope down to the outward side of these two surfaces. Actually, let me just make this a little bit longer like that. And I think that's good. All right, so maybe I'll just do a little bit more. And I think the intersection uh, is, you know, located nicely at the highlight. So I think that's good. Let me just do a little bit more over here. So I'm just going to do a little bit more slope. I think that's pretty good. All right, so now let's actually create a pocket over here. So I'm going to grab a curve. Now for this one, it's always a good idea to just use the curve that's, um, well, basically the same. So I'm just going to 
I'm going to actually make it all flat first. And let me just slope it down just a little bit toward, oops. Let me just slope it just a little bit like that. And I'm going to create a curve from here to here like this. Of course, a little bit of crown wouldn't hurt like that. And because I'm actually cr uh, creating across the center, I'm just going to um, duplicate this over to this side so that it's uh, symmetrical. So I think that looks good. So now I'm just going to grab these curves over here and I'm just going to project it like that. Of course, right now this is a little bit uh, too long. So I'm just going to extend the curve back like this. And now I can just trim it like that. And that's all there is to it. But of course, you need to create the pocket over here. So I'm just going to actually extend this a little bit further. Now, I didn't really take into uh, account the uh, pocket depth. But uh, well, I, this is just a quick exercise. So I'm just doing this. All right, so now that's done. Let's go ahead and create a surface over here. Uh, usually surfaces like these that, that uh, you cannot see, they can be flat. But if it's a sheet metal, you probably want at least a little bit of crown. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put a fillet over here. So a surface fillet, it's going to be, well, you can use the existing theoretical, doesn't really matter. G2, and because it's, um, I think there's quite a lot of uh, acceleration or like a lot of lead in, I'm going to use a form factor of 0.5. And let's try with 100. Oh, it needs to be a lot bigger. So I'm just going to double it. Uh, in fact, I think I'm going to, yeah, 300. I think that's pretty good. All right, so now that's done, uh, let's go ahead and delete the construction history over here like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and tr untrim this piece over here, delete the COS and let's project it again. Okay, uh, now this one, because it's not exactly, because I did just did a surface villa, you'll see that there's a little bit of discrepancy between the COS and the surface. So if that's the case, what you might want to do is just extend this just a little bit and just do an intersection between the two. So I'm going to grab that one, just do an intersect, I'm going to trim this one, and I'm going to trim that one, and it creates a nice surface over here. All right, so actually, let me just create uh, a surface over here just so that I can uh, do a blend between these two. Now, I'm not going to make a wheel flat and all that stuff, but at least let me just make something so that I can do some kind of blending. Okay, so I'm just going to create a surface like this, and I feel like it's going somewhere like that. A little inboard over here. I'll just roughly create that, something like that. Well, maybe it's not as dramatic. Maybe it's just a lot more subtle. All right, so if that's the case, let me just bring this one back. To be honest, I don't know what the body side or the rear fender looks like. So I'm just going to do something like this. Just create a really subtle transition, but at least you know, it gives us a little bit of surface over here. So maybe I'll do something like this. Maybe do a little bit of that. And let's go ahead and do the same thing over here so that I can continue on the fade. All right, so I think that's good. I'm just going to project these two over here. I'm gonna trim here and I'm going to trim there. Oh, uh, as far as this one goes, that should not have been trimmed, um, but I'll take care of that later. So I think this is good for now. So I'm just going to trim here, trim here like this. And of course I want some kind of volume here. So I'm just going to do a rail over here. Uh, this one you can do a parallel or you can do whatever you want. All right, uh, so let's cr create a surface filler between the two. Of course, this one is going to be quite a large body. So I would say probably even bigger than that. So maybe I'll go even 400 or even five. I think this one is pretty good. Now, oh, this one actually creates it. I'm kind of surprised. And actually, it's pretty similar. Although it would be nice, uh, it would be nicer if it was the same. Okay, so it looks like there is a little bit of difference. So if that's the case, I'm just going to get rid of that and I'm going to actually match it. So I'm gonna let's untrim this one, untrim that one. And I'm just going to strike a curve between these two like this. Say normal, like that. Trim here, trim here, and let's just do a square between the two, like this. And it is going to be curvature on one side, 
and curvature on the other. All right, so that surface has been created. So we've got a nice transition over here. And of course, let's go ahead and delete the construction history over here. And I'm going to untrim this back to where it needs to be. All right, so now I'm going to just delete the CWS over here. And I'm going to do this one over here. So let's go ahead and trim it. So let's go ahead and intersect. And obviously I do need a CWS over here. So I'm going to project that one. And I'm going to trim this one over here. Oh, uh, oh, actually, you know what? Since I'm all done over here, I think I'm just going to trim half of it. So I'm going to grab everything over here like this, and I'm just going to project it with a curve that was created right at the center of the grid. I'm going to trim this one, and I'm going to trim that one. Let's create, uh, trim that one, and I think that is good. All right, so the last part is, of course, the fillet over here. So how do you do that? Well, if you look at the line over here, actually, you know what? Let's go back to the picture. You'll see that uh, maybe it's, uh, well, I thought it was straight. I think I think it is straight. So I'm just going to do straight. So what I can do is I can just project this one over here. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. I'm going to instead I'm untrim this one, and I'm just going to delete the COS over here for now. Actually, you know what? That's a bad idea. Okay, so I'm just going to do this and I'm just going to extend the COS over here. Oh, COS over here. Like that. And I'm just going to temporarily trim this one. Okay, so the reason why I'm doing this is because I want this edge and this edge to line up nicely. And all I have to do to finish this one is just grab a surface fillet over here existing theoretical should be good and it does look like the fillet is quite small so i'm going to say this one i'm going to just use a form factor of uh one just to make it simple and i'm just going to uh, create a fillet like this of course so you want this to be edge aligned right quite a lot of spans over here um so what you can do is you can of course uh, try to manually adjust it but this is not the focus of this particular lesson over here. So I think I'm just going to leave it like this. We'll multi-span uh, and that creates a nice uh, soft transition over here. And that looks pretty good. I think the size is not too bad. All right, so I'm just going to delete the construction history over here. And of course I do need to finish this one. So let me just go ahead and untrim over here. And what I'm going to do is I think this was just, a was it a draft? Oh, that's a fillet. Yes, that was just a draft. So I'm going to go ahead and extend this piece over here like this. I'm just going to make sure that it didn't do anything funky. And I'm going to draft this one over here. Now in uh, in production environment, you probably want to um, actually make a, a little bit of draft angle, but this one, I'm not doing that. So I, I'm just going to leave it like this. And to finish it off, all you have to do is just intersect over here like this. Uh, let's see this one it's for some reason. Oh, I know why. Okay, so I'm just going to project this one over here in X. And did I, I might have accidentally delete the COS over there. So let's project it using one of the curves at the center. I'm going to trim that one. I'm going to trim that one. I'm just going to trim this one, trim that one, trim this one. Okay, so let's take a look. And that's it. So now you get a nice transition from here to here. Nice fade. You got a license pocket over here. And that's all good. Now that's what our usually license pocket uh, requires a somewhat of a flatter surface. I think there is a requirement, but I'm not sure what that is. But um, as long as it's relatively flat, it should be good to go. So now all you have to do is just symmetry over. Let's uh, hide the curves over here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the isoparms off. And that's how you create that. So super nice highlight. Um, yeah, well, I mean, the surfaces are simple, so it's going to look good. So let me just uh, use a shades guy. So nice highlight flow here. Actually, you know what? I think showroom might be better. Nice transition between these two surfaces and nice blend to the corner. And that's how you do it. Now, of course, you can put a little uh, flat uh, or fill it over here. But because of this one is relatively, uh, it's really small. I didn't put one in, but that's how you create the license pocket of, in this case, 
who's in there. All right. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the content and see you next time. Want to learn Autodesk Alias and digital sculpting? Then become a member at 3ddesignacademy.com where you'll find hundreds of video tutorials ranging from basics, including curve creations, intermediate level tutorials such as this wheel, all the way to class A modeling of the entire car exterior. Interested? Visit 3ddesignacademy.com.